with the best variety of the 80s, 90s, and today. On 97.1 Wash FM. Tonight, we're following several breaking stories. The president's top attorney calling for the Russia investigation to now be shut down. This just hours after the deputy director of the FBI, Andrew McCabe, is fired. Also breaking tonight, President Trump versus Stormy Daniels. The president claiming the adult film star breached a confidentiality agreement and could now owe him more than $20 million. Plus, the devastating images, flattened vehicles finally being pulled from that bridge collapse in Miami, the crack seen days before the tragedy, and the apparent miscalculation just two hours before it all came down. High-speed help, the stolen car going 80 miles per hour through a small town, the police trying to catch up. Tonight, the driver who stepped in to help, forcing the alleged crooks to ditch the car and run. From ABC News, this is ABC World News Tonight. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday. I'm Tom Yamas, and we begin tonight with major developments out of the White House. The president's top attorney today calling for special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation to be shut down. This just hours after Deputy Director Andrew McCabe was fired just two days from retiring. The president taking to Twitter where he has taunted McCabe in recent months. Mr. Trump's ally saying McCabe tried to undermine the president. And details now emerging that similar to his old boss, James Comey, McCabe kept detailed memos of all of his interactions with the president. A source telling ABC News those documents are now in the hands of the special counsel. ABC's Tara Palmieri at the White House tonight starting us off. Tonight, an aggressive switch in strategy from President Trump's legal team. Lead attorney John Dowd calling for an end to the Russia investigation, pressing Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein to tell special counsel Robert Mueller, case closed. Dowd's motivation? He says Rosenstein should follow the, quote, brilliant and courageous example of Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who hours earlier fired Deputy FBI Director Andrew McCabe. He's one of the first top-level officials at the FBI to start looking into the allegations that the Trump campaign coordinated with the Russians during the election. There's been no collusion between us and the Russians. There was absolutely no collusion. There is absolutely no collusion. Overnight and into this afternoon, Trump blasting McCabe on Twitter, calling his firing a great day for the FBI. Even questioning the integrity of his own Justice Department, tweeting, there was tremendous leaking, lying, and corruption at the highest levels of the FBI, Justice, and State. McCabe's exit is over an inspector general's report, finding that he allowed FBI officials to speak with a reporter about the Clinton Foundation probe and then misled investigators who asked him about it. McCabe denies any wrongdoing. We do think that it is well documented that he has had some very troubling behavior and by most accounts a bad actor and should have some cause for concern. President Trump has repeatedly questioned McCabe's politics. How much did you ask him that? I don't think so. No, I, you know, I don't think I did. You, don't. you did not. I don't know what's the big deal with that. McCabe is firing back. Speaking to ABC News, he calls the attacks part of a, quote, ongoing assault on his credibility in the Russia probe. McCabe, a staunch ally of former FBI Director James Comey, who the president also fired. I can tell you that I hold Director Comey in the absolute highest regard. I have the highest respect for his considerable abilities and his integrity. And today, this major development, a source tells ABC News that McCabe, just like Comey, kept detailed memos about his conversations with the president and now has handed them over to Mueller. So Mueller now has those memos as well. Tara joins us now from the White House. And Tara, the president also taking aim at former FBI Director James Comey, accusing him of covering up corruption, lies and leaks. And tonight, Comey is responding. That's right, Tom. Comey was quick to respond. He tweeted that his new book gives a full account of what happened so that people can decide for themselves, quote, who is honorable and who is not. Tom? Tara Palmieri for us at the White House tonight. Tara, thank you. Next to the other breaking political headline, the legal battle between the president and Stormy Daniels. An attorney representing the president in this matter, claiming in court documents the adult film star who says she had a sexual relationship with the president may owe him more than $20 million for breaking their confidentiality agreement. And now Daniel's attorney is firing back, saying they won't be intimidated. Here's ABC's Kenneth Moten with the latest. Tonight, the president versus the porn star. Donald Trump and his personal legal team firing back at Stormy Daniels, seeking more than $20 million in damages. Daniels is fighting to speak out about her alleged 2006 affair with Trump. Do you have a non-disclosure agreement? 
Do I? Daniels, who was paid $130,000 by longtime Trump attorney Michael Cohen just before the 2016 election, is accused of breaching the confidential settlement at least 20 times. Trump publicly hands off the court battle until now. He and Cohen filed paperwork to move the case from state to federal court. This could end up in a very big, very nasty, contentious court battle where Donald Trump would be forced to give testimony under oath in a deposition. The president retained high-profile Beverly Hills attorney Charles Harder, who represented Hulk Hogan in his legal battle against Gawker. Harder saying Mr. Trump intends to pursue his rights to the fullest extent permitted by law. Daniel's attorney, Michael Laminati, calling the move a bullying tactic, saying how can President Donald Trump seek $20 million in damages against my client based on an agreement that he and Mr. Cohen claim Mr. Trump never was a party to and knew nothing about. Hashtag checkmate. Avenatti says Daniels has been physically threatened to stay quiet about her alleged sexual relationship with Trump. When the American people are permitted to hear from my client, and hopefully they will hear from my client shortly, uh, they will learn the details uh, relating to these threats. All right, Kenneth also joins us now from the White House. And Kenneth, attorneys for Daniels offering no evidence so far or further details about those alleged threats? That's right, Tom. No evidence, no details, but Stormy Daniels' attorney says when she's allowed to talk, and he hopes that will happen soon, the American people will be able to judge on whether she's telling the truth about those alleged threats. Tom? Kenneth Bowen for us tonight. Kenneth, thank you. And this programming note, more on the breaking political headlines and the Russia investigation tomorrow when George goes one-on-one -on -one with Senator James Lankford and Congressman Adam Schiff on this week. Now to that disastrous bridge collapse in Florida. Reports that just two hours before the structure came down, engineers were meeting with school officials to discuss whether cracks found posed a safety risk. Officials trying to figure out what happened as the first of those flattened cars begins to be removed. Here's ABC's Victor Okendo. Tonight, the painstaking process. Crews sawing through twisted metal using heavy machinery, pulling out cars flattened, smushed under 950 tons of that collapsed bridge that killed six in Miami. The wait for answers excruciating for families of the victims. Jorge Fraga, desperate for word on his uncle Rolando, not knowing if he was killed and still stuck under the rubble. What has this been like for you and your family not knowing? Terrible, terrible, because we don't know anything. And uh, I call, uh, every now and then I call, uh, the center and uh, they just told me, you know, we're there waiting and we, we don't know anything. Later learning his uncle's body was inside this Jeep Cherokee. This as Florida International University now reveals that about two hours before the bridge crashed Thursday, their design team was meeting with the Florida Department of Transportation and the contractors about reported cracks on the north end of the bridge, concluding there were no safety concerns and the cracks did not compromise the structural integrity of the bridge. That meeting happening two days after this. Call in to share with you some information about the FIU pedestrian bridge. That's a lead engineer from one of the companies responsible for the pedestrian bridge speaking about those cracks and the safety risk. We're not concerned about it from that perspective, although obviously the cracking is not good. Those cracks, not necessarily the cause, though, according to NTSB investigators, who also say crews were tightening cables on the north side of the bridge when it collapsed. Several angles still being investigated at this time. Victor Okendo joins us live now from the side of that collapse. And Victor, you're learning how difficult it will be for authorities to identify some of those other victims? Tom, from here they're taken to the medical examiner's office and that's where they begin the process of identifying the bodies. Police saying that will not be easy. In some cases, they might have to use fingerprints or DNA. Tom? Victor Okendo for us tonight. Victor, thank you. Turning now to the new round of rough weather sweeping across the country. That storm dumping plenty of snow in the Sierras, more than three feet there. That system now on the move. It could deliver a blast of snow in the east on the first day of spring. Sam Champion joining me now. And Sam, we were talking before the show. This is also a serious rainmaker, this new storm. Yeah, we've got some areas of strong to severe weather, but I like the line that you just said. This is coast to coast, the last punch of winter. So let's get to the boards. We'll show everybody what we know right now and what's going to happen with this storm at the end. So Sunday, let's just jump ahead because this is the same storm that dropped that snow over the uh, Sierras and also through the Rockies. By Sunday, this is the first time it redevelops into a low and pops out into the plains. The severe storms, just like today in Dallas, will be again from Dallas all the way into Atlanta over the weekend. So there'll be a lot of rain and some of those storms will be strong to severe the potential for a uh, tornado there as well. Here's the two model outputs that we look at. The American model, the low, this one now look at 
at the snow line here from New York to Philly to Washington, D.C. Throw up the European model and you'll see that New York is out of the snow, but Philly and D.C. are in it. So the most important thing we'll tell you tonight is that we cannot eliminate Washington, Philly and New York out of the snow line when we get into Wednesday. We'll give you totals tomorrow night and we'll be able to narrow down exactly what cities are in. Tom. All right. Feels like hurricane season with those competing models. Isn't it right? Yeah, exactly. All right, Sam, thank you. And overseas now to escalating diplomatic tensions over that nerve agent attack on British soil. Russia expelling 23 British diplomats after the UK ordered the same. Surveillance images released of the car the former Russian spy and his daughter were in before they were poisoned. As sources tell ABC News that he was acting incoherently in a restaurant just before collapsing, a symptom of the nerve agent poisoning. ABC's Terry Moran is in Moscow tonight. Summoned to the Kremlin today, the British ambassador to Russia informed of Moscow's response to the UK. 23 British diplomats expelled, given a week to leave. In London, Prime Minister Theresa May standing firm. We will never tolerate a threat to the life of British citizens and others on British soil from the Russian government. And the investigation continues. Police trying to establish when and how Russian spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter were poisoned. Police releasing this security camera video of his maroon BMW hours before the attack. Sources telling ABC News that Skripal was shouting and acting incoherently in a restaurant just before he and his daughter collapsed. Those are symptoms consistent with nerve agent poisoning. All this on the eve of a presidential election in Russia. And Russians we talk to in Red Square, they don't believe their government had anything to do with the chemical weapon attack in England. Do you think Russia poisoned the spy Skripal? No. Who are you voting for? Putin. 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 Russians are hearing a very different story. The foreign ministry today saying Russia had nothing to do with this attack and pointing the finger at other countries, the U.S., the U.K., the Czech Republic, Slovakia, and Sweden. Tom? Terry Moran speaking with Russian voters there. Terry, thank you. Next to the latest in the search for 16-year-old Amy Yu. Police say she was dropped off at her bus stop 12 days ago but never made it to class, ending up on a flight to Cancun with a 45-year-old married man. What we're learning tonight about that investigation. Here's ABC's Ariel Reshef. New details emerging tonight about the disappearance of 16-year-old Amy Yu and 45-year-old Kevin Esterly as officials in Mexico issue an Amber Alert. The two vanishing on March 5th. Police say the married father of four and the teen flew on one-way tickets from Philadelphia to Cancun. All information received thus far leads investigators to believe that Amy Yu left Allentown willingly with Kevin Esterly. Tonight, Esterly's wife, Stacy, speaking through her attorney, telling ABC News she was concerned about the relationship. Stacy told uh, Amy's mom that this relationship was unhealthy. It was more than a uh, pseudo father daughter relationship. Yu's mother going to police after discovering that her daughter allegedly changed school records to claim Esterly as her stepfather. Esterly reportedly signing you out of class 10 times. Police advising Kevin and Stacy to stay away from the teen. Her family pleading for her safe return. I love you. Can you come back? Tom, if captured, Esterly could face a third degree felony charge of interfering with the custody of a child. Tom. Ariel, thank you. Now to that dangerous high speed chase through local streets, all captured on police dash cam and body cam. The Good Samaritan getting involved and what police say you should never do for everyone's safety, especially your own. Here's ABC's Whit Johnson. Five teens on a wild high speed chase in a stolen car. The cops in a highway vigilante right behind them. The suspect vehicle clipping another car. Debris going airborne over the quiet streets of Butler, Wisconsin. To get some kids who think they're above the law in jail for doing a car theft is worth it to me. Then something unexpected. 20-year-old Andy Westenberger joining the pursuit in his white pickup truck. Out of nowhere, peekaboo. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm in the front of their car, and here's the police, and here are all these kids come out of the clown car running. He jumps a median right in front of police to help block the suspects in. Westenberger chasing alongside officers when the teens take off on foot. Hey, show me your hand. The five suspects all caught and taken into custody. But tonight, a stern warning from law enforcement. Try and look at the big picture.